Today's question comes from Mr. Yulb Sari. He writes, I'm confused about politics today in the media. Some people sound like they are deliberately lying to get elected. I no longer know who to trust. Can you help? Dear YUL, with regular news, fake news and alternative facts, there's a lot of misinformation about politics in the world today. I'm here to explain modern day politics to you in simple terms that everyone will readily understand. I will be objective. I am not supporting any political party. In fact, I tried to start the apathetic party, but the main plank, our rationale, was that nobody should care, so my plans were obviously wasted. Do not listen to Fox News or CNN. Listen to me. I did serve on several municipal councils, so I know what I'm talking about. I also organized a rally for a prime minister. I'm an expert on politics. First, let's clear up the positional situation. The best way is to use a sports metaphor. In hockey, there's a left wing, center and a right wing on each forward line. Some politicians think that they can simplify politics by merely relegating someone to such a hockey position, left, right or center. But let's face it. Both wingers are equally important and not too many find themselves in the center position anymore. They tend to drift. In any event, how did we get into this athletic metaphor in the first place? As with many other unfortunate situations, you can blame it squarely on the French. Why blame the French? Here are a few reasons. They invented that Napoleon complex, you know, the little guy who desperately wants to be a big deal. While Napoleon was actually only 5 feet tall, his true hostility may have stemmed from his undersized genitals as revealed in his autopsy. People with undersized genitals often get into politics. Also, the French think they're great lovers, they claim to have invented the French kiss, and they claim they make love more than anyone else, on average, 137 times a year. The rest of us sluggards are stuck at less than 120. The French love yappy dogs such as poodles, and they won't clean up after them. Yes, they are rude and generally lack a sense of humor. They think that their cooking is the best in the world. And they are perverted because they invented sadism thanks to the Marquis de Sade. That's just a start, but let's get back to politics. In the French seating arrangement in the Estates General, similar to a parliament, those who sat on the left opposed the monarchy and supported revolution. Those who sat on the right were supportive of the traditional institutions of the old regime. That's how the political wings got started. Since then, hockey teams have become far more extreme. We now have the far left and the far right and the far, far right or Attila the Hun type of parties. Some think the left has actually moved like a tectonic plate to the center or even to the right of center and that the right isn't even on the ice anymore because, after all, they own all of the rinks. In Canada, there are parties that cover the entire ice surface from left to right the New Democrats, the Liberals and the Conservatives being the top three parties. The two major political parties in the United States, the Democratic and Republicans, correspond closely with liberal and conservative ideologies, respectively. Their differences can be explained by another metaphor, not hockey, but life-saving. If someone is drowning, here's what each party would do. The liberal immediately jumps into the water, swims quickly to the drowning person and heroically brings him back safely to land. In contrast, the conservative throws a life buoy attached to a rope precisely halfway out, and then shouts for the drowning person to swim for it. Two different solutions, the first, which might cause the death of both rescuer and the drowning person, and the second, only the death of the latter. Conservatives play it safe. Liberals are open to risk. Conservatives are open to money. Conservatives believe government should be puny, operating mainly at the state or local level with minimal economic interference so they can make more money. They prefer private sector-based solutions to problems. Liberals think government should intervene in the economy and provide a broad range of social services to ensure well-being and equality across society. This sounds like a Christian point of view. You know all that biblical stuff about being our brother's keeper and such. Strangely, the so-called conservative Christians tend to not really care that much about their brother, and many occupy the far right. Liberals occupy the left wing of political beliefs and conservatives the right, but there have been occasions, just as in hockey, when a left winger skates over to the right, and a right winger slides to the left. This is called, political expediency, and it often involves an unsuccessful leadership run by the aforementioned skater. The loser has no alternative but to retreat to the opposite team. When this occurs, the opposite team generally make a big fuss about it, they make ugly faces at their opposition and taunt them with nasty words of rebuke. 
Sometimes entire political parties move or are taken over by one-man rule such as a dictator or a military coup or even a reality TV show star. I know this sounds fanciful, but it has actually happened. Not long ago Germany was led by a Ph.D. in chemistry, the Ukraine by a comedian. That's politics. The Republican Party in the United States was founded in 1854 by anti-slavery activists, so one might think they play on the left and support African Americans. Over the years, their platform's core values aligned with conservative or right-wing ideology, forsaking African Americans. The modern-day Democratic Party was founded around 1828 by supporters of Andrew Jackson. In its early years, like right-wingers, it supported limited government. It was for state sovereignty and slavery, while opposing banks. Like the Republicans, it dramatically changed, championing civil rights, schools, and health. Since Franklin D. Roosevelt and his New Deal coalition in the 1930s, now it has promoted a social liberal platform. So you never can tell just where your party is going to line up. No wonder people are confused. Then, there are fringe parties. The Green Party favors a strong federal government, grassroots democracy, nonviolence, social justice, and environmentalism. The Libertarian Party favors limited government intervention in personal, social, and economic issues. Nationalists promote the interests of their nation, and often believe in its superiority over others just like rival gangs in an inner city. Watch, West Side Story, when you get a chance, and you will see the Jets versus the Sharks, great names for political parties or professional sports teams. So those are the basic political ground rules, but just how do people actually vote? For a long time, many simply did not. Women for example. Canadian women waited until 1918, and American women a year later in 1919 before they could vote. Prior to that, men did not want to burden women with voting because they were so busy with housework. Men tend to be clear thinking like that. My mother's voting habits amused me. She was not hampered by wings or parties or platforms or promises that politicians made to steal her vote. My mother didn't care if you were liberal or conservative, rich or poor. What she cared about was your looks. Coming from a small town in a rural background, she appraised a politician like a farmer might appraise a horse. If you had good teeth and a nice smile, it was as simple as that. A candidate's eyes and hair were other factors to be weighed in. She didn't care if you were pro-gun or anti-gun. This voting pattern must drive candidates nuts, but you will notice that most do try to make a good impression with their appearance. Many wear wigs, many ditch their glasses for contact lenses, and my guess is that a few might wear girdles. Do you remember girdles? Getting back to politics, the bottom line is that most voters ask one simple question of their would-be representatives. That question is, if I vote for you, what's in it for me? In Canada, it led to universal health care. The United States hasn't quite got there yet, but seems to be edging towards it. Seniors occupy a sizable voting block. However, on fixed incomes, their financial resources are generally limited. It takes a lot of money to prosper in politics now. Another factor is that we vote primarily out of habit. With so many disappointments in the past with those I have supported, I am moving closer and closer towards my mother's technique. Don't get me started on appearance versus reality. We could be here all day long. That concludes today's Q&A. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the Retirement Coach channel as well as provide comments as we seek to expand the videos. The Retirement Coach boasts decades of experience and immense wisdom. A generous soul, he passes it on like a runner in a relay race, a baton given to a teammate. Use the comment section to send in your questions. Full Disclosure the Retirement Coach content is written and derived from my newspaper humor column and podcast for which I enjoy copyright. The text has been converted to video by AI called, Pictory, which I have purchased, available to anyone at https colon slash slash pictory dot AI question mark ref equals KNQW7 where they allow you three freebies to get started and to whet your appetite. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.